Hey everybody, it's ALG. Welcome in everyone back to Let's Play Sweet Code in 3. Uh, in the last uh, video, well in the last session rather, I tried to commentate over this again and it wouldn't go through, so this is my second take in commentary. Uh, I do apologize for that, but it's not like you guys even knew that, but whatever. Uh, anyway, in the last uh, video we were trying to recruit Landis and we finally managed to get him. It took me about 50, 50 minutes on average of just wandering around and then I finally looked up how to look, uh, how to recruit Landis and it turns out you have to be in that little uh, fork in a road in that specific part of the map. And I'm really sorry that, you know, I, that I didn't really like go much into that, but yeah. <laughs> we got him, that's all that matters. Otherwise he's just a pain in the ass. But anyway, uh, as you guys basically uh, saw me thumbing through my uh, things, I managed to get uh, a couple uh, Fury runes and um, just one haziness rune. Main reason why uh, is because I got a hazen rune because, well, it's good rune that you could put on basically any character. And it doesn't work all the time, but it works enough for it to be useful where the character basically becomes like... Well, basically it raises the uh, the avoid stat, which is really good. Wait, there's no avoid stat in Sweet Code 3. I'm thinking about something else, but um, yeah, well basically what it, what it really does is, is it makes your character avoid enemy attacks on a much higher frequency, so it's always good to have. Another cool thing about the haziness rune is that it kind of makes your characters teleport a little bit. I don't know if... I don't know, but it's kind of... It's a good rune, so you should buy it. <laughs> How about that? Um, as you're looking at Landis, uh, you can see his stats from there. Uh, obviously his stats are really not that good at the start, but he's very high leveled. And, uh, well, his weapon is at level 10. Uh, and he, to be honest, he's actually not that bad of a character when you first start out with him, but he's one of those people that you want to tuck away, you know, after you're done with a few sessions with him. Uh, interesting uh, information is that he's wearing blood armor, and what that does is mitigate uh, 10 health points off each and every turn. Random battle there. And um, <clears throat> one of the only ways you can counter this is to put a sunbeam room on him, which heals 15 a turn. So he won't lose the 15 HP for every round that the blood armor induces on him. Random battle there. And the uh, good thing about blood armor is that it's actually powerful for this uh, time in the game. It's actually not the most powerful armor that you can get. There's better armor out there, obviously. But uh, blood armor right now is pretty good. And if you could compare it, if you could pair it with a sunbeam room on any character then, or any character that can wear it rather, then that's a very good combination. I would definitely flow with that until you can find something better. So. Now we finally get back in here to continue the storyline. Yeah, we're too late because we're looking for stupid Landis. Winger held us up. <coughs> Whoa. Oh, that's my sick yell. Okay, so anyway, you can see that the entire town is surrounded with Harmonian troops. Now, Harmonian troops are basically going to be a lot like... Uh, Highlander troops from Sweet Coden 2. They're basically like party fodder. Like, they're easy to mow down, and they usually take about about two hits to kill. So it's nothing... it's not going to be anything hard. I wouldn't really worry about these guys yet, but these guys are kind of uh, trickier to deal with in major battles, as you will see later on. All right. Ah. See, that's what low skill levels do to you. They'll make you miss a lot. They'll make you not do as much damage, and you always got to make sure that you gotta uh, keep your skill levels up as high as they can. Make sure you get a lot of. Uh, experience points for that. So anyway, we pretty much chewed them and spat them back out. Uh, no challenge here whatsoever. Yeah, medicine be my ass. <sighs> Alright, so we got rid of the guards. <laughs> Next. Oh, they got the entire... They got the entire three huts under siege. Oh my god, we're all gonna die. 
It's kind of funny because um, this place kind of reminds me of Fredonia because of the grapevines. I don't know if any of you guys live in Buffalo or whatnot, but I remember going down to Fredonia all the time. They used to have the grape, uh, like, fields of just, like, grapes, you know? So, I don't know. It's just kind of a sweet little memory I have of that place, but that's what this place kind of reminds me of. It's kind of funny how, I don't know. And it's just as spacious, too. Like, there's nothing in Fredonia. It's just lots of grapes and, uh, colleges. Alright, so... <clears throat> Yeah, these guys are only going to do, like, 33 damage max, so I wouldn't even, like, sweat it. This is a, a, probably, yeah, this is the exact same fight that we've pretty much done, so. And so far, I think, uh, Landis' blood armor has done more damage to him than an actual Harmonian soldier, so. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Okay, so we got lots of skill points, and we're all happy. How about that? So, I'm sorry that I haven't really been uploading a lot as much as I usually do. I've been sick for the past week, and I've had a few major things happen to me, but some of which has already been resolved, and I'm glad I can finally get some of the crap that's been happening out of the way. And, um, you know, it's, that, it's becoming that stressful time of the college uh, season again. But pretty quick, it's going to be summer, and we're going to be uploading every day, and I'm going to be continuing Uncharted, and everything's going to be good. Okay, so we pretty much charge it to the town, only to be halted again by these Mantors, which are arguably easier than the Harmonian troops that we just fought. And the rear? Our friend Caesar will handle that. Oh yeah, I bet he can handle rears very well. Caesar. He always knows how to butt his way out of the situation. Whoa! And the Mantors come flying to him because they're attracted by his manliness. <laughs> Permission to land denied. Okay, so, um, yeah, we basically steamroll these guys, continue on. Nothing to see here, move along. I'm surprised we didn't get him out in one hit. Oh, I spoke too soon. Yeah. Fubar is just kind of great right now. Alright, so there you have it. It's probably the most challenging thing we've done all game, right? I mean, majority of the time we're just running around recruiting people. Fall back! No, Halak will just attract more Mantors. Oh, Leave it up to Sweet Coden to be this lame. What? Uh, oh, okay. Charge! Or something like that. <laughs> Awkward little ending for you, but I guess it works out after all. <clears throat> oh, wow, they did hear our battle cries. Okay, so you get this weird character named Dios. Uh, Dios is... Um... A bit of a loser. <laughs> um, loser character. Uh, there's a lot of funny dialogue that goes on within... Probably within the next few episodes that we're going to be showing. Um... Yeah, as you can see, he's totally not into the battle whatsoever. He's more of an aristocrat than he is uh, a lieutenant or an officer. I mean, I can't really picture him leading people into battle. Because he really... <clears throat> well, war isn't really his craft. To be honest, I don't even know why they even put them there. I mean, I don't know. Wow, they're only testing our strength? Jeez. And Halk wants more. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, 
Alright, so I clear my throat once again, and we're gonna heal up all these people. Yeah, as you can see, I'm still kind of recovering, but I am feeling much better. Rest assured. Alright, so, uh, yeah, as you can see, everybody's peaceful, and we're gonna be introducing a new character. Her name is Sena, or Sano, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, tomato, tomato, doesn't really matter, I guess. Unless if you're a real stickler on pronunciation, then I'm sorry, but... You know, I tend to be kind of lax when it comes to pronouncing characters' names, especially in Sweet Code. And I mean, you gotta give me some credit for pronouncing some of these people's names. It's just crazy sometimes. <clears throat> uh, uh oh shit. Uh uh oh. Yeah, you know shit's going down when the sprites change. Oh. Well, not sprites, but character pictures. Okay, now you could choose either one of two things here. You can strike her and possibly kill Chris, or you could question her. I will choose question. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. If you choose strike then sergeant will hold you back and nothing will happen so it's not going to change the story if you choose to strike uh probably would have made for some more interesting results where he basically just scolds you more and stuff like that but i usually don't like to do that so i always chosen the second answer for some reason i don't know why then you have Nash, shady as all hell. Yeah, whatever. Hmm. See, Hugo has much to learn. But then again, can you really blame Hugo? I mean, he feels like a failure for letting Lulu die. He's never going to let that go. You know for a fact that he's never going to let that go. So, and that's going to be one of his downfalls. Not one of his downfalls, I should say. That's a bit too dramatic. But, you know, it's going to be one of his shortcomings is he's always going to be blinded by that rage. And that's what, that's what makes Hugo probably, like, the most uh, emotional character out of the entire game. Because Jetto, Jetto's really distant, like, emotionally. And Chris is like, well, petty prima donna. Oh, I'm so tired of the council treating me like such a hero. And then you have Hugo, who really, you know, who not comes from the gutter or anything. But he's like, you know, he's had it rough, more or less. He's had it rougher than Chris, I know that much. But, well, I don't know. That's debatable. That's all debatable, I guess. But, I don't know. Hugo's just kind of... You, you, you generate more feelings for Hugo than you do Chris or Jetto. At least I find to do that. It could be different with any other player. Uh, really depends on you, but um, <clears throat> I think that we see the most development with Hugo. But anyway, we gotta talk to Hortez again. As you can see, he is still lost. We're gonna be meeting him up for about two more times. Yeah, I think two more times. Yeah, this is not Luca. This is so not Luca. I mean, Luca, we'd be having like a ton of stables around here with tons of horses, and we're gonna be having some epic sushi bar and grills. Oh my god, it would be this town would be racked up to the gills with sushis. Let me tell you, sushi all day, every day. Man, I could go for some right now. And now I'm making myself hungry. It's great. And he just. Totally wanders off in the opposite direction again. So, yeah. It kind of reminds me of Ad Life from Sweet Coden 2, where you keep on telling him to do something over and over again. And eventually, you just kind of like snap and then you recruit him randomly. That's what Hortez is like. It's like Ad Life from Sweet Coden 2, where you had to throw a wind, wind rune on him. I think it was a wind rune. Whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so I had to talk to this one guy. He should give you a metal set. And there's going to be a certain character that you can recruit later on uh, where you can use the metal set to give all the characters rankings uh, for the major battles. But I usually do not do those. Or you don't really have to use them anyway. But, you know, it offers more variety for your gameplay anyway. So this is ALG. 
signing off, and I believe with this final rummage of the items, I will see you guys later. Peace.